Today we will be studying on chapter 1 biological molecules, subtopic 1.4 proteins, classification of protein. So the learning outcomes for today's video will be classify proteins according to their structures, composition, simple and conjugated and functions. Today's video we will focus on classifying proteins according to their structures. So protein can be classified into structures, their composition and also function. In protein structures, we can classify them into globula and also fibrous. So in today's video, we will study on the protein structure which is globula proteins. Globula proteins, they are spherical in shape and they are soluble in water. So spherical in shape means that's why it has a name called globula means it is in a globe form so globular proteins they are insoluble in water because they have hydrophilic side chain which is found on the surface of the water whereas the hydrophobic side chain is found within the ball like structure which is also known as uh, which is also known as the inner core found within the ball it's also found in the inner core region of the of the structure so phobic means fear hydro means water so fearing of water which is also known as hydrophobic side chain is found in the inner core region of the globular protein right so the hydrophilic philic means loving hydro means water hydrophilic side chain is found on the surface of the water therefore it will interact with water so enzymes hormones are globular proteins because hormones will be transported in blood, right? Therefore, it needs to be soluble to function. So, examples of globular proteins are enzymes, insulin, antibodies, hemoglobin. So, all these uh, enzymes, insulin, antibodies, hemoglobin, they are in what type of structure? Proteins, they are known as protein, but they are in which structure? Globular proteins. So, most of the globular proteins, they have tertiary or quaternary structure. So, the next structure of protein is fibrous protein. So, fibrous protein, they consist of polypeptide chains which are arranged in long strands. They are largely secondary structure. Secondary structure means they are either in alpha helix or beta conformation. And they consist of simple tertiary structure. So most of the fibrous protein, most so most of the fibrous proteins, their function is to provide support, shape, external protection to the vertebrates. So the fundamental structural unit is a simple repeating element of secondary structure, which is a repetition of alpha helix or beta structure. So fibrous proteins are insoluble in water. Why? Because they have a high concentration of hydrophobic amino acids. Hydrophobic means water-fearing amino acids, both in the interior core and also at the surface of the protein. Therefore, they are insoluble in water. So, the only fibrous protein which is soluble, it's called as fib fibrinogen. Fibrinogen is the plasma protein used for blood clotting. So, most of the fibrous protein, they are either in a hair-like shape, which is alpha helix or in block or sheet form which is in beta conformation. So in today's video we will study about the examples of fibrous protein which are keratin, collagen, silk fibroin and elastin. So all these protein they have what type of structure? Fibrous structure. So keratin. Keratin is a group of fibrous protein present in hair, skin, nails, horns or feathers. They have a large proportion of cysteine. The amino acid of keratin has a large proportion of cysteine. Cysteine contains sulfur. Therefore, we know that it will have disulfide bonds. So, the degree of disulfide bonds will determine the flexibility of the keratin. So, if we take example like hair and your nail, both of your hair and nail contains keratin. So, hair is more flexible because it has fewer disulfide bonds. Whereas, nail, it's not flexible because it has more disulfide bonds. So, keratin has a long sequence of alpha helix secondary structure. So, we know that one alpha helix 
right consists of hydrogen bond now this alpha helix of the carotene consists sulfur therefore we know that it has disulfide bonds now for carotene it has two strands of alpha helixes which means this is one alpha helix then carotene has two alpha helix now we know that one alpha helix it has disulfide bond and also hydrogen bonds now what happens when they have two alpha helix when they have two alpha helix what happens is a cross link will happen between the hydrogen bonds and the disulfide bonds these will cause the carotene structure to be super twisted this super twisting will amplify the strength of the overall structure of the carotene so remember that carotene has two strands of alpha helixes next is collagen collagen is also a fibrous protein it is found in most of the connective tissue which is skin tendons ligaments cornea of the eye so tendons means what tendons means the tissue that connects between the muscle and also the bone that is called as the connective tissue which is known as tendons now the the tissue that connects bone and to another bone is called as ligament therefore it's a connective tissue which is called as ligament now collagen is made up of three polypeptide chain now this is one polypeptide chain single polypeptide chain now they are saying that collagen has three polypeptide chain which means in other word we have we can call it as triple helix collagen so this three polypeptide chains will wound together in a triple helix structure the strands will wind together in a alpha helix and the helix forms because of the regular amino acid sequence there is a repeating pattern of glycine proline and also x x can be any amino acid but most probably the amino acid will be proline or hydroxy proline so collagen is well known for its structural role and also tensile strength so what is tensile strength tensile strength means the amount of tension that it can withstand without breaking or tearing so for example like uh, collagen is high in tendons and also in ligaments right so let's say now you are working out and you have to lift up dumbbells right so dumbbells have many types of weights right so let's say when you lift a dumbbell which is more than the amount of weight that you're supposed to lift you will have a, a tissue tear so this tissue tear is probably tendons or le ligaments therefore collagen has high tensile strength for your connective tissue especially for the tendons and also your ligaments so the next fibrous protein is silk fibroin silk fibroin is not produced by humans instead it is produced by insects and also spiders the polypeptide chains are in beta conformation it is rich in alanine and also glycine residues so the structure is flexible because the beta sheets are held together by weak van der waals interaction they have weak van der waals interaction therefore it's flexible however it is not stretchable because the beta conformation is already highly extended therefore it's not stretchable but it is flexible because of the weak van der waals interaction that is held together in the beta sheet now the silk fibroin the amino acids are in a beta conformation lastly elastin elastin is abundant where tissues with elasticity is required examples like the walls of arteries the skin ligaments lungs and bladder so elastin has the ability to be stretched and also to relax to its original state without damaging example like a spring right so spring when you stretch let's say a spring let's say when you stretch it it will it will stretch right once when you release the spring what happens is it, it will relax to its original state without damaging so elastin exists as a random coil containing open helixes it lacks of regular repeating structure and therefore is in a random coil so elastin is made up of multiple molecules called as tropoelastin so multiple uh, molecules of tropoelastin will form elastin 
So this trooper Justin is able to stretch and also recoil without breaking. So elastin is formed when many tropoelastin molecules aggregate. So now let's say this is elastin which is made up of many tropoelastin molecules. Okay. So when it is in a relaxed form, it will be in a random coil. When it is stretched, it will it will the single tropoelastin molecule. Okay, it will cross link with another tropoelastin molecule. So this is what happens when elastin is stretched and also when it is in a relaxed form. So elastin is found in the bladder, right? So why it is found in the bladder? Because bladder stores your urine, right? So the more urine is stored in the bladder, the more the bladder needs to be stretched, right? So once the uh, so once the urine is excreted, what happens is the bladder will be in a original state. It will be it will relax and it will be in original state. Whereas like say like for the walls of arteries, your heart pumps blood right so the moment your heart pumps blood which will enter the arteries the blood will be in a high high pressure right so the arteries the walls of arteries needs to be stretched in order to withstand the blood pressure therefore in the walls of arteries it needs to have elastin so now we will see we have studied about globular and fibrous protein so globular and fibrous is the structure of the protein. We can classify the structure of the protein into globular and also fibrous. So for globular, they have non-polar core, which is also known as hydrophobic. And also it has a polar surface. Polar means hydrophilic at the outer surface. And globular proteins, they are water soluble. They need to be soluble because they have transient contacts with other molecules. Transient means in a short term. Right, so they have a short term contact with other molecules, therefore, it, it must not form aggregates. So, globular proteins they include both alpha and beta conformation within its own molecule, such as like secondary, tertiary, and quaternary structure. So, enzymes regulatory proteins are known as globular proteins, whereas for fibrous protein, they are non polar, they are water insoluble. They do not need to be soluble because they function for structural stability. They provide support, shape and also external protection. Therefore, it, not, it does not need to be water soluble. So, fibrous protein, they are either in alpha helix or in beta structure. Unlike globular, they must have both alpha and beta molecule in its own. Uh, alpha and beta structure in its own molecule. But for fibrous, it must either have alpha or beta conformation. So that is all that you need to know about the protein structure which is globular and also fibrous. If you find this video helpful, please like, share, comment and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.